I call the member for Mayo. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Australia is the ninth largest energy producer in the world and has enormous renewable energy resource capacity. Despite uh, the naturally gifted position that we are in, we remain heavily dependent on imports of refined petroleum products and crude oil to meet our liquid fuel demand. The reason for this dependency is the fact that our abundant energy sources are not the type and quantity of fuel we currently consume in the form of liquid fuels. A report commissioned by the NRMA and prepared by retired Air uh, Vice Marshal John Blackburn, titled Australia's Liquid Fuel Security, called on the government to take precautionary measures to deal with the disruption of the flow of oil to Australia. The report highlighted the fragility of our supply and the impact of disruption to our supply through war, natural disaster, or economic turmoil. For instance, dry goods could run out within nine days, chilled and frozen goods within seven days. Retail pharmacy supplies could also run out within seven days, hospital pharmacy supplies within three days, and fuel available to the public may also be exhausted within a matter of days. One could be forgiven for thinking this is some kind of bad movie script, but it's not a script. This is the very real risk we face as a nation. Australia, as a member of the International Energy Agency, has the obligation to maintain 90 days of net oil stock supply. However, we have failed to meet this obligation since 2011. The fuel security package announced by the government purports to address this um, with measures that will increase our domestic storage and maintain a sovereign refining capacity. But much of it is about um, fuel tickets being stored in the US. This is not a solution. Our fuel security is directly related to the sovereignty of our nation, I think more than any other issue. Yeah. We, what we need are clear strategies that will remove our dependency on oil with immediacy and most effective approach within our control to a transition to electric vehicles. However, just as it is our obligation under the International Energy Agency, we are also failing when it comes to electric vehicle sales. And the reason for this is quite simple. We do not have a nationally coordinated plan for the transition to, clear ve to clean vehicles. In 2020, just 0.7 per cent of our new vehicle sales in Australia were electric compared to a global average of 4.2. In Norway, 75 per cent. We should be building electric vehicles here, not just driving them. The government's fuel security strategy, uh, sorry, uh, fuel vehicle strategy is a start, but it falls so far short. The strategy omits some of the most effective policies at increasing electric vehicle uptake, namely an increase in direct purchase incentives, fleet procurement, um, vehicle CO2 standards and stringent fuel uh, efficiency standards. Report after report concludes that direct financial incentives have the biggest effect on EV purchase decisions. Increased incentives would drive EV demand, which will increase EV model availability and, in turn, increase EV demand. Incentives do not have to be straight-out subsidies, although I would welcome such an initiative. Low-cost carbon, uh, low-cost loans available through government-backed borrowing could provide access to EVs across the nation with minimal or no cost to government. Um, it is really quite appalling that Australia has one of the few OECD countries with no fuel efficiency standards. In contrast, mandatory fuel efficiency standards have been adopted by approximately 80 per cent of the global light vehicle market, including in the US, EU, Canada, Japan, China, South Korea and India. And we have no mandate for ethanol in this nation, and it is a great shame. And I know it's an issue that the member for Kennedy has talked about for as many years as I have been in this parliament. Mr Speaker, we are often uh, approach complex policy uh, and priorities with mutual exclusivity, and there is no more evident than in the discussion around fuel security. The transition to electric vehicles must be considered as a strategic component uh, to our national goal of achieving fuel security and not just a standalone uh, policy that promises a lot but delivers very, very little. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, Australia has been very, very lucky on this issue, uh, but really any matter of issues uh, could stop the fuel uh, coming into our nation and then we would be in absolute dire, dire condition. Thank you. I call